And a very pleasant good afternoon, baseball fans, and welcome to another edition of Henley Hornets Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Today, coming to you from the Evergreen Federal Bank Sports Complex on the campus of Hidden Valley High School for a Skyline Conference showdown between the Hidden Valley Mustangs and the Henley Hornets. So glad to be with you on a beautiful sunny afternoon from Murphy, Oregon. My name is Josh Eldridge, and we've got a good one today, a couple of teams with a lot of history and and quite a bit on the line today. Each team undefeated in league play. Only one will remain that way after seven innings this afternoon. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we'll tell you a little bit about the seasons that each of these two teams have had. We'll also get to know our starting lineups this afternoon and get first pitch underway. This is Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Introduce Bitface Marcom Solutions, your trusted partner in marketing and communication. We specialize in crafting compelling campaigns, eye-catching graphics, and impactful branding materials. Smith Bates is like working with dependable friends. They always help us build our professional image. Through the innovative strategies that the team at Smith Bates suggested, we've been able to give the brand at Calor the boost that it desperately needed. Unlock your potential with Smith Bates Marcom Solutions. This is where unconditional love and immeasurable happiness reside. This is home. Coltwell Banker, where home begins. Threads. There are many threads that run through our region. There are churches and schools and little league teams that bring us together and bind us into communities. There are roads and cars. There are houses and jobs and businesses all woven together to make the fabric of our communities. There are financial threads that are part of that tapestry as well. For over 80 years, it's been our pleasure to be headquartered here, providing financial services to generations of our friends and neighbors. From that first savings account, to retirement planning, and all of the cars and houses and groceries in between, we keep your money local, investing it back into our communities adding more threads to the fabric to make our community stronger. Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. Find your path. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 120,000 participants here in Oregon who take part in high school sports or activities. And welcome you back to Hidden Valley High School for some Hornets baseball as they get ready to take on the Mustangs this afternoon. A Skyline Conference showdown. Let's take a look at how the Skyline Conference standings look coming into today's ball game. The Hornets find themselves number one in the league, 6-0 and in conference play, 14-1 and overall in the season. They are number one in the state. They have the most wins in 4A by three wins. The next best team is Junction City with 11 wins and also North Marion with 11 wins. Back to the Skyline Conference, Hidden Valley is in second place. They're 4-0 in league play, 10-3 and overall in the season. They are 13th in the state. And then in the Skyline Conference, it's sort of everybody else fa- fighting for that third place spot. Phoenix is 1-3, 5-9. Crosspoint Christian is 1-5. They're 2-12 overall. And Mazama still searching for that first league win. They're 0-4, 
one and 11 overall on the season. I talked about Henley being number one in the state. They're joined by North Marion at number two. Scapoose is number three, an opponent that Hidden Valley beat just last weekend. Junction City is number four. The Dalles is ranked fifth. Pendleton and Nick Yahweh is number six, followed by Marist at number seven. Crook County is ranked eighth. North Bend is number nine. Philomath rounds out the top ten in the state of Oregon. Hidden Valley finds themselves in 13th uh, place in the state right now. Let's take a look at the Mustangs, who coming into today's contest have won six straight games dating back to their Skyline Conference opener against Klamath Union. They swept the Pelicans, they swept Mazama, and then back on Saturday, they swept Scapoose in a weekend doubleheader uh, with a 7-4 to win and a 5-4 to win. Now find themselves here against the Hornets. Meantime, Henley coming into today, they carry an eight-game win streak. Uh, pardon me, a nine-game win streak. And it was actually yesterday that they wrapped up an 18 to nothing win over Mazama. Back on Saturday, they beat the Vikings 10 to nothing, And they also got a 35-2 to win over Klamath Union during this stretch. Their last loss was March 28th against Banks. That was at a tournament uh, over in Medford. But since then, the Hornets have been red hot, scoring a lot of runs and not allowing too much themselves. And, of course, when they come here to meet the Mustangs, it is a historic battle. These two teams almost every season battling for the top of the Skyline Conference. I think back to the battles in the mid-early 2010s, who, uh, I mean, just some fantastic battles, of course, met in the playoffs as well. We'll talk a little bit about the history between these two teams throughout the broadcast this afternoon. But it looks Looks like our head coaches are just about ready to meet at home plate on the artificial turf surface here at Hidden Valley High School. We'll step aside one last time, and when we come back, we'll introduce you to the starting lineups for both teams and get ready for first pitch. The Henley Hornets taking on the Hidden Valley Mustangs next on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Sports was kind of defined me as a person. I loved to play every sport I could possibly play. The Abbey's was really the family stomping ground for all of our community. Saturday afternoon soccer tournaments, we'd head over to Abbey's afterwards. And then when we got up into middle school, on our way home, we'd stop at Abbey's after basketball game. When I go home, I want to see two things when I drive through Winston. I want to see my Abbey's and I want to see my high school. And those are the two memories that stick out the most to me. Threads. There are many threads that run through our region. There are churches and schools and little league teams that bring us together and bind us into communities. There are roads and cars. There are houses and jobs and businesses, all woven together to make the fabric of our communities. There are financial threads that are part of that tapestry as well. For over 80 years, it's been our pleasure to be headquartered here providing financial services to generations of our friends and neighbors. From that first savings account, to retirement planning, and all of the cars and houses and groceries in between, we keep your money local, investing it back into our communities, adding more threads to the fabric to make our community stronger. Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. Find your path. Introducing Smith Bates Marcom Solutions, your trusted partner in marketing and communication. We specialize in crafting compelling campaigns, eye catching graphics, and impactful branding materials. Smith Bates is like working with dependable friends. They always help us build our professional image. Through the innovative strategies of team at Smith Bates suggested, we've been able to give the brand at Calor the boost that it desperately needed. Unlock your potential with Smith Bates Marcom Solutions. Well, the Hidden Valley Mustangs have taken the field this afternoon as we are just minutes away from Henley Baseball this afternoon on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Let's meet the starting lineup first for the visiting Henley Hornets. Leading off and in center field is going to be Peyton Price. Batting second is the catcher, Connor Shively, followed by the shortstop, Aiden Hayes, batting third. Mark Carpenter bats cleanup at third base, and the first baseman, Owen Harper, hits fifth. Batting sixth, Max Price at second base, followed by Lane Frank, the right fielder, hitting seventh. Bo Pyle is starting on the mound for Henley. He bats eighth in the order, followed by Luke Austin, the left fielder, rounding out the order for 
the Henley Hornets. Now, on the mound for the Mustangs is going to be Ethan Charlie. And so far, this will be his fifth start of the season, sixth appearance overall. The right-hander has thrown 22 and two-thirds innings, and in that time, an ERA of 2.77. And so he's looking to quiet a Henley order, which uh, has not been quieted hardly at all this season. Uh, Mercy ruled Mazama twice over the weekend, did the same to Klamath Union. And uh, now a, a, a Hidden Valley team that looks to knock them off and maybe just maybe stake their place in the top 10 in the state and garner some statewide respect. And uh, the Mustangs play well at home. They're in their home white uniforms, white really from head to toe. They've got white caps with blue brims on, white jerseys with blue letter orange trim, white pants as well. For Henley today, they're wearing their navy blue caps with yellow jerseys, white pants for the must or for the Hornets rather today. And just about ready now for first pitch. This afternoon from Hidden Valley, starting a little bit later than anticipated, 5.04 right now, but a beautiful day for baseball. A slight wind and beautiful blue skies. First pitch comes in high and tight to Peyton Price. And that's how we start the ball game with a 1-0 count. Looking about 58 degrees and nothing but sunshine ahead from Murphy, Oregon, just south of the Climate City in Grants Pass. 2-0 count to Peyton Price. Price in the leadoff spot this season for Henley, batting 400 even. The 2-0 pitch, that one will miss inside. A quick 3-0 count to Price. Got himself in a nice spot here to lead off the ball game. Charlie looks in, gathers the sign from Burden, his battery mate behind the dish, and here's the pitch. That one will find the zone, no doubt about it. 3-1, the count to Price. We'll meet the defensive starters for Hidden Valley in just a moment. Charlie... Looks in, shakes off the first sign from Burden, but finds the 3-1 he's happy with. Delivers, that one's popped up in the infield over is the second baseman, Zauer, but called off by the first baseman to make the catch. That was Matthew who secured the ball. Let's go around the diamond for the Mustangs. Behind the dishes, Burden Lewis at third, Mendez at short, Zauer at second, Matthew at first. In the outfield, it's Kuhnert, Klipfell, and Graham. Batting now is Connor Shively, left-handed catcher for the Hornets. Here's a pitch. Taken on the outer third, a nice two-seam fastball from the right-hander, graced it, and that is strike one called. And here we go, Charlie with the 0-1. Swung on, ground ball towards third. Picked up by Lewis, the throw on to first is in time, and two quick outs. Against the Hornets, brings up Aiden Hayes. Aiden Hayes stepping in now, the right-handed shortstop, the senior for Henley, batting 388 this season. And for Henley, a lot of these guys at the top of the order started with astronomically high batting average. Uh, they've kind of come back down to earth since uh, getting some more games in, but a 388 average for Hayes, still remarkable in that three hole and he gets on base to the tune of 500 drawn a lot of walks he also gets hit by pitches the 1-0 is popped into the foul territory and out of play behind first base so they count a ball and a strike to the Henley shortstop Mark Carpenter waits on deck the cleanup hitter I don't think there's been too many opening innings where Carpenter in the cleanup spot hasn't had an opportunity to hit. See if Hayes can get on base here with two outs in the top of the first, still scoreless. Ground ball bouncing out towards short. Mendez plays it on a hop, fires over to first, and the throw is not in time. And Hayes beating out an infield single with two away in the top of the first. Two out base runner for Mark Carpenter, leading his team in RBI and home runs this season. Five homers, 28 RBIs for Carpenter, and he's batting 435, the third leading hitter for the Hornets this season. Two away and a runner aboard at first. It's going to be the first time we see Charlie work out of the stretch today. 
Here's the first pitch taken for a strike outside, but a nice pitch. Again, that two-seam fastball is gonna break back towards right-handed hitters. It started maybe outside, but the two-seamer breaking back over the plate for strike one. Charlie set, delivers to Carpenter. Here's the 0-1, Hayes takes off. It's a breaking pitch outside called a ball and Hayes dives into second safely. And a 1-1 count to Carpenter now with a runner in scoring position after Hayes swiped second base. For Hayes this season, that is stolen base number seven on the season. It's a 1-1 count to Carpenter. Charlie checks the runner. And the 2 1 is going to find the zone. So two balls, two strikes to Carpenter with Hayes aboard at second. Looking to end to the sign from Burden. And time is called at the plate. And want to make a correction. Pitching on the mound for uh, Hidden Valley Carlisle, not Charlie. Apologies there, having trouble reading some handwriting. So Carlisle on the mound for the Hornets. A drop third strike as Carpenter swung and missed, but he's going to get to first base safely. And so a wild pitch allows Carpenter to move to third. Or pardon me, Hayes to move to third, and Carpenter aboard at first, and now an interesting opportunity for Owen Harper. So Carlisle back on the bump for Hidden Valley. And Harper stepping in now this season. Harper not quite where his batting average would like to be, 184 as he takes strike one, but stealing second base there was Carpenter. And so now two runners in scoring position. But for Owen in the last handful of games, he's really come alive in a couple of key areas. He's got four RBI on the season, all of them in the last handful of games, but falls behind here, 0 and 2 to the Henley first baseman. Two runners in scoring position and two away in the top of the first inning, still scoreless from Hidden Valley. Burden, the catcher setting up outside. That pitch will miss outside, 1 and 2. Good pitch to lay off there from Harper. You look at Harper this season, primarily a pull hitter. Here's the one, two. And he's gonna watch that one just miss outside. That's a great take there from Harper. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and two runners in scoring position for Henley. On deck, Max Price, the freshman, hoping to keep the rally going for the Hornets. Two and two. Harper skies one foul out of play behind first base. So we'll do it again. Two balls and two strikes to Owen Harper. Choking up a little bit and getting closer to the plate in the batter's box is Harper. Trying to extend his range to the outside. It's where Carlisle's been working him most of this at bat. The 2-2 will miss outside. And now the count runs full. Great at bat working from Owen Harper at one point down 0-2. Now faces a full count. Been protecting that outside part of the plate. Good adjustment here from the Henley senior. Carlisle comes set and delivers. That one, another outside pitch. Harper again fouling it off, staying alive in this at bat. We'll do it again, 3-2 to Harper. 
Last handful of games for Harper, I mentioned, that's when he's been doing a lot of his damage. Take a look at a five game hit streak for Harper. Ground ball over to first. Matthew up with it. He'll take it to the bag himself to end the inning. The Hornets strand two base runners, one base hit in the inning, but still scoreless as we head to the bottom of the first. This is Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Sports was kind of what defined me as a person. I loved to play uh, every sport I could possibly play. The Abbey's was really the family stomping ground for all of our community. Saturday afternoon, soccer tournaments, we'd head over to Abbey's afterwards. And then when we got up into middle school, on our way home, we'd stop at Abbey's after basketball game. When I go home, I want to see two things when I drive through Winston. I want to see my Abbey's, and I want to see my high school. And those are the two memories that stick out the most to me. Back with you on 104.3 and 960 Sports. Our coverage of Henley Baseball continuing this afternoon as we head to the bottom of the first inning, still scoreless, as it'll be Bo Pyle on the mound for Henley. Take a look at some of his stats this season. This is Pyle's sixth start on the year. He's worked 24 innings, 2-0 on the mound this year as far as decisions go, an ERA of 3.20 for Pyle. He's going up against a Hidden Valley order that goes like this. Wiley Mendez leads off at shortstop. Elijah Zauer is playing second base and batting second. Jack Matthew, the first baseman, bats third and hitting cleanup is Caden Cooner in left field, uh, followed by Brooke, Brock Lewis at third base. Mauricio Mendez designated hitting at number six and Connor Graham hits seventh in right field. Ethan Carlisle, the pitcher, is batting eighth, followed by Mason Clipbell in center field to round out the Hidden Valley order. First pitch from Pyle is in the zone against Mendez, batting from the right side. The pitch is going to be taken in the dirt. Now a 1-1 count to Mendez. Played in all the games for Hidden Valley this season, batting 386 on the year. Tips one foul. Count a ball and two strikes now to Mendez. Hidden Valley as a team this year, batting 340. A ball and two strikes to Mendez. Here's the pitch. That one will miss high. Looked to be a breaking pitch. Didn't have enough on it to break back into the zone. Two and two. The count to Mendez. The right-hander pile from the windup. The 2-2, check swing, but that's in the zone anyway. Strike three looking for Mendez in the first out here in the bottom of the first. Stepping in now is Elijah Zauer. And that'll be a pitch in the zone. Oh, and one to Zauer. And that was the first strikeout for uh, Bo Pyle. Last time he was out was a, a game against Phoenix, was the league opener where he struck out 11 batters in that performance. It's a 1 1 count now to Zauer. That pitch will miss in the dirt now, 2 and 1. Sour this season, batting 324 for Hidden Valley. Already one away in the bottom of the first inning. Still scoreless. That one's popped playable behind home plate. Shively underneath it. Tough play to make, but he lets that one drop in front of him. A lot of spin and a hard ball to read for Shively as that one will drop down harmlessly to the turf. But now two strikes to Zauer. Two and two will be the count to the Hidden Valley second baseman. 
Zauer, a junior on a Hidden Valley roster with six seniors total. That's about average, I'd say, for a high school baseball program. Shively tried to frame up a pitch he didn't quite catch. And the count runs full to Zauer. Hidden Valley dugout getting rowdy for the 3-2 pitch. Here it is. That one's popped. Again, playable behind home plate. Shively under this one. And again, a tough one to read there. Kind of when he looks up, the sun right behind us from our broadcast position behind home plate. And as we look northeast and the sun kind of setting right behind us where Shively was looking. That's a tough ball to play. So we'll do it again. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. And Pyle pulled the string on him with the changeup. Two away here in the bottom of the first. That'll bring up Jack Matthew. He is third on the team in batting average this season, hitting 410. First pitch to him will miss low and away. A ball and no strikes to the Hidden Valley first baseman. Pile from the windup. Here's the pitch. That'll be flared foul out of play behind first base. A ball and a strike to Jack Matthew. Caden Kuhnert on deck. Cleanup hitter in left field for Hidden Valley. Here's the 1-1 one, one home. Breaking pitch will miss inside. Look to be the curveball from Pyle. Started high and again just finished above the strike zone. See what he comes with here on the 2-1. Again, fouled off. Pyle bringing the velocity nicely on the fastball. He has the classic combination, four seam. He mixes in a two seam here and there, but circle changeup action and the curveball. See what he goes with here on the 2-2. Two -two. Bouncing ball to third foul. So two and two once more. Pyle a junior for... The Hornets really started to see him pitching more last season in his sophomore year. Came along nicely and now getting the start in one of the biggest games so far this season. And he got Matthew looking for strike three as he strikes out the side. We head to the top of the second inning, still scoreless from Murphy, Oregon. This is Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and on .com. <laughs> Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant backseat driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Josh Eldridge back with you at Hidden Valley High School for Hornets baseball after one inning still scoreless. Due up this half for Henley is going to be Max Price, Lane Frank, and Bo Pyle. That's six, seven, eight in the Henley order, and it looked like Price showing bunt but came up empty. 0-1 oh the count to Price, the freshman second baseman for the Hornets. Talked about this freshman group quite a bit for Henley. And almost all of them have earned playing time at one point or another, a ball and a strike now to Price. Now, he's the only freshman who's regularly in the starting lineup, but and against Mazama, we also saw Corbin Hamilton, Carson Sims, and 
the freshman really aiding the this team in games where they're able to be productive against younger pitchers against uh, Mazama and Claymouth Union those teams come to mind certainly a ball and two strikes to Max Price here's the pitch Bouncing ball out towards short. Mendez charging. Quick fire to first. And a nice play on that ball for the first out. That'll bring up Lane Frank for Henley. The right fielder batting in the seventh spot for the Hornets. Frank this season batting 267. Knocked in a couple of RBI in the big 18 0 win against Mazama just yesterday and a taken strike one on the outside. Carlisle has mostly worked the outer third of the plate, especially against the Henley right-handers. Here he comes with the 0-1. That one will miss outside. Ball and a strike. Henley's done a nice job this season of taking what's given to them though. I think of the Phoenix games where Phoenix pitchers brought some velocity and Henley was Perfectly content with just poking the ball the other way and scoring some runs. Here's Frank in a 1-2 count. And the pitch from Carlisle. Off-speed pitch taken outside. 2-2. Two and two. A nice bending curve ball there from Carlisle. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Frank lifts one into right field. Over is Graham. Underneath it. And he makes the catch for the second out. And that will bring up Bo Pyle. Henley pitcher looking to get a two-out rally started. And the first inning against Mazama that was played on Saturday and that game was resumed on Monday, Henley scored five runs with two outs in the first. Let's see if they can start a rally here. First pitch swung on and missed by Pyle, 0-1. Carlisle came inside to the right-hander with the off-speed pitch. Here's the 0-1. Pyle checks his swing. That pitch broke out of the zone, missed low. A ball and a strike there to Bo Pyle. On deck is Luke Austin. The 1-1. Taken for a strike. 1-2 and two, the count to Bo Pyle. Quite a few fans lining the backstop here at Hidden Valley. No true bleachers, but quite a few people bringing their own chairs, enjoying the sunshine for some baseball. Here's the one-two home. That is taken for strike three. Pyle goes down looking, and that will end the inning. The Hornets go down in order, and we head to the bottom of the second, still scoreless on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 120,000 participants here in Oregon who take part in high school sports or activities. Bottom of the second inning ahead, still scoreless at Hidden Valley High School. The Hornets taking on the Mustangs, and it's the middle of the Hidden Valley order due up this half. That's Caden Kunert, Brock Lewis, and Mauricio Mendez. Kunert going to step in to lead things off, batting a clean 400 on the season. He bats from the left side. Bo Pyle still on the bump for Henley. Fires in the first pitch, hacked at and fouled off. 0-1, oh the count to Kunert.
Cooner, the second most strikeouts on the team at eight. And for only striking out eight times, it's not too bad when you consider only one guy has struck out more times than him, and that's actually Brock Lewis, who's up next in the order. A 1-1 count on its way to Coonert is a two-seam fastball that runs outside, 2-1. Two and one. A lot of movement on that two-seamer from Pyle. I haven't had the opportunity really to watch it from behind home plate, and you can really see how much that thing breaks away. Coonert offers up, and an elevated fastball comes up empty. Two balls and two strikes in a scoreless ball game, ball game just getting started in the bottom of the second inning. Here's the pitch. Flared foul. Count remains two balls and two strikes to Cooner. We'll meet the defense for the Hornets. And a foul ball. Connor Shively catching Mark Carpenter at third. Aiden Hayes at short with Max Price playing second. Owen Harper at first. In the outfield from left to right, it's Luke Austin, Peyton Price, and Lane Frank. The 2-2 is going to miss high and in. The count runs full to the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the second inning. Cooner putting together a good at-bat here. Still a scoreless ball game. So Mustangs a chance to get a leadoff base runner and a full count pitch. Here it is. Line drive into center field, and that'll be the first base hit of the game for Hidden Valley. Runner aboard at first. And that will bring up Brock Lewis. Lewis this season batting 406. He is third on the team. First pitch to Lewis taken high. 1-0. Middle infield sort of playing a double play depth for Henley, although it, it seems more straight up. You got guys quick in the middle of the infield in Price and Hayes. They don't have to cheat so much. Cooner takes off from first. The throw down nailed him. There before the slide even started for Cooner, and he is cut down on the base pads for the first out in the inning. That pitch was called a ball, 2-0 and oh to Lewis. But now a much different situation for the Hidden Valley third baseman, batting with nobody on and one away. That pitch will find the zone. Maybe a touch outside for Lewis's liking, but it's a 2-1 count to Brock Lewis. Price working back out of the windup again. Misses low, 3-1. and one. The backstop here at Hidden Valley. You heard the ball ricochet off it. Just straight up wood, no, no padding. And it also doesn't really wrap around uh, the entirety of what you would consider a backstop. The 3-1. Taken on the inner third of the plate, three and two. You got about four planks high down the first base side and behind home plate, but then as you move towards the Hidden Valley dugout, just about one plank high, most of it's chain link. The three-two pitch fouled off. So we'll do it again, three balls and two strikes. This turf field put in at Hidden Valley in 2018. It was my senior year of high school here at Hidden Valley. The 3-2 once more. Hit hard into center field. Back a few steps is Price underneath it to make the catch for the second out. Now we'll bring up Mauricio Mendez. Mendez, a newer addition to the Hidden Valley order. This is only his 10th game played in. He's missed four games this season, but batting 375 in 16 at-bats. That pitch will miss wide, 1-0. and oh. And I can remember being at school here at Hidden Valley, and the days that Henley came to play, man, it was an event. A lot of fantastic battles between these schools in the late 2010s. Hard ground ball to shortstop. Hayes comes up with it, fires on to first to end the inning. One base hit, no runners left for the Mustangs as we head to the top of the third scoreless between the Mustangs and the Hornets. This is Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. What rhymes with great? 
participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Getting ready for the top of the third inning between the Henley Hornets and the Hidden Valley Mustangs. Due up this half for Henley. It's Luke Austin, Peyton Price, and Connor Shively. That's 9-1-2. and two. The Hornets still searching for their first run. Luke Austin rips a line drive in a left field. That gets down. Austin a big turnaround first as the ball was played incorrectly by Cooner. Let it roll all the way to the wall. And that'll put Luke Austin aboard at second. The first pitch he sees, and Henley's got a runner in scoring position back to the top of the lineup. It's Peyton Price. Price this season again batting 400. 11 RBIs for him this season. He's showing bunt. Lays it down in front of Carlisle. He's going to toss on to first for one, but that will advance Austin to third. Now just a runner 90 feet away for Connor Shively. Shively is the number one hitter on the Hornets this season. Batting 551. What a time it would be to come up and try to score the opening run of the ball game for his team. The left-hander awaits the first pitch, and it's a two-seamer running outside, 1-0. Pitch on the way to Shively. And Carlisle working out of the windup. Shively lifts one into foul territory in left field, but that will drop foul. Ball and a strike to Shively. 27 hits this season for Connor. 25 of those have been singles. The 1 1. Ground ball, hard foul. Down the third base line, one and two for Shively. Even batting from the left side, primarily hitting to the opposite field. And with the third baseman, Lewis, sort of holding the runner at third. Quite a big gap there on the left side of the infield. Here's the one, two. That's going to miss behind Shively. Two and two. Good job there by Burden to not let that one get away from him. Two balls and two strikes to Shively. And Carlisle delivers. That one will miss in. Maybe a little bit low as well to Shively. And a full count. Aiden Hayes is on deck for the Hornets. And the full count pitch. Weak ground ball out towards second. Zauer's going to take the easy out at first. But the Hornets score first. They lead one to nothing. An RBI for Shively. And now base is empty for Aiden Hayes and two away. Hayes one for one today, singled in the first, was left stranded. And he takes the first pitch for a strike. A nice job there by Burden to frame that one up, made that one look perfect, even if it might have been a touch outside. He sets up outside again to Hayes, now almost in the other batter's box. Bouncing ball to third, Lewis charging it, fires on to first, and the throw in time, but the Hornets strike first. One run in the inning on one base hit. They leave no runner stranded. They lead one to nothing as we head to the bottom half of the third on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Introduce Smith Bates Marcom Solutions, your trusted partner in marketing and communication. 
We specialize in crafting compelling campaigns, eye-catching graphics, and impactful branding materials. Smith Bates is like working with dependable friends. They always help us build our professional image. Through the innovative strategies that the team at Smith Bates suggested, we've been able to give the brand at Calor the boost that it desperately needed. Unlock your potential with Smith Bates Marcom Solutions. Heading into the bottom of the third inning, Henley leading Hidden Valley on the road, one to nothing. It's the bottom third of the Hidden Valley order due up this half. That's Connor Graham, Ethan Charlie, and Mason Klipfel. Bo Pyle entering his third inning of work as the Henley starter today. And we're ready for baseball as the Mustangs try to answer the run that Henley scored in the top of this inning. And a leadoff single has him in business. A line drive to left field puts Graham aboard at first. First pitch swinging, and that brings up Ethan Carlisle. Second base hit of the day for Hidden Valley, although the first one was out on the base pads when Coonert tried to swipe second. We'll see if they've got anything cooking here with a runner aboard at first and nobody out for Carlisle. Throw over to first, but back safely there is Graham. Carlisle this season batting 440. Fouls off that one into the glove of Price. 0 and 1. Carlisle with the largest sample size and batting 440 on the team. He, all intents and purposes, leads the team in that number. Now, Zacchino is ahead of him, but having only played in seven games, and it's four less than Carlisle has. He's batting 500, but Carlisle 440, certainly impressive. Here's the pitch, and that one will find the zone. Looks to be a ball and two strikes. The count to Ethan Carlisle. Pitcher for Hidden Valley, looking to help himself out a bit. Here's the two-strike pitch. It is taken in the dirt for ball two. Carlisle was leaning into it. He wanted the swing at it, but correctly holding off. A good job there for Carlisle. He is a senior for the Mustangs, and he gets rung up on a pitch that certainly looked outside from here, but a big first out collected by Bo Pyle. That'll bring up Mason Klipfel. And by the way, that's the fourth strikeout of the day for Pyle. And this will bring up Klipfel. This season batting 190 in the nine hole for Hidden Valley. He shows bunt, the pitch high. They try to throw down to Harper at first, but the ball ends up in right field. And that's going to allow Graham to advance to second with one out. An error costing the Hornets some base running position for Hidden Valley there. That pitch missed high, I believe, to Klipfel. So ahead in the count, 1-0. Runner in scoring position. Wiley Mendez waits on deck for Hidden Valley. And it looks like we might have a conference on the mound for Henley. A perfect time for us to remind you that today's broadcast on MyBasin.com is brought to you by Klamath Falls Subaru. Through the Subaru Love Promise and Subaru Share the Love events, Klamath Falls Subaru has donated thousands of dollars to dozens of hometown charities. Comfortable and not corporate at Klamath Falls Subaru. Stop by and say hi. All right, the conference looks to be concluded. We'll resume with a 1-0 count to Mason Klipfel. A runner aboard at second for Hidden Valley. They trail Henley 1-0 in the bottom of the third.
The 1-0 count to Clipfell. He's showing bunt. He will pop it up and foul it goes. One and one. Clipfell has shown bunt twice. We'll see if he does it for a third time. That might have been what prompted the mound visit for the Henley coaching staff who might just be trying to make sure they know the bunt rotations, how they want to cover this with a runner at second. Clipfell not showing bunt that time as the pitch misses outside two and one. Modest lead off a second from Graham. Nothing remarkable. Here's the 2-1. Although his secondary lead is certainly something. He's almost getting into a full sprint in his secondary lead and getting about a third of the way down towards third base. That pitch missed. It's a 3-1 to Clipfell. Pyle comes set and delivers a pop-up in the infield. Might be in foul territory, and Carpenter secures it for the second out. A pitch that might have been ball four if Clipfell hadn't offered at it. Instead winds up a pop out. Now two outs for Wiley Mendez. Mendez 0 for 1 today. Struck out in the top of the first inning. It's a second look at Bo Pyle. And a pitch that finds the zone on the outer third. 0 and 1. Are they going to say that that he balked. So I think the base umpire called a balk on, on Pyle. So that'll advance Graham to third. The strike there did not count. Here's the 0-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. 0-1. Now the count to Mendez. Runner at third. That'll be the tying run for Hidden Valley in the bottom of the third. Here's the pitch. That one misses just wide. Looked to be the curveball from Pyle. And looked like a nice pitch, but called a ball. One and one. That pitch will miss low. Two and one. On deck, Elijah Zauer hoping for an opportunity this inning. Pyle from the windup, the 2-1, is taken low. Ball three. Seen both Henley and Hidden Valley pitchers opt to do this. Work from the windup with the runner on third. He'll do it again here on the 3-1 pitch. Fouled straight back and the count runs full. Three and two. Big pitch on the way for Bo Pyle. Looks in, gathers the sign from Shively. Shively sets up a touch outside. The pitch is taken for ball four. And now runners aboard at the corners for Elijah Zauer. First walk surrendered by either team. Comes with two outs in the bottom of the third inning. Hanley trailing, pardon me, Hidden Valley trailing one to nothing. And the tying run is at third, Graham. Mendez at first, here's Elijah Zauer. A pitch. Taken for a strike. 0-1. Oh Looked to be the off-speed pitch from Pyle. That's what he's been going with here a bit. To open up these at-bats against Hidden Valley hitters. Here's the 0-1. Oh Swung on and missed. 0-2. Oh the count to Zauer. This season, Zauer with 14 RBIs. He is... Second on the team in that metric. An opportunity to knock in the tying run at third, but he does have two strikes against him. The 0-2. Taken for ball, f ball one on the outside. The groans from the large group of Henley supporters here. Seems like Pyle has hit that ball, uh, hit that location a few times. Sometimes it's called a ball. Sometimes it's called a strike. We'll see where Pyle comes with here on the 1-2. That's taken low. The runner from second takes off. They cut it, throw it home, and the throwdown is wild. Hidden Valley scores the tying run, and now advancing to third is Mendez. Hidden Valley drew up that play, or pardon me, Henley drew up that play perfectly, but the throw home was wild, and a run scores. Zauer bats in a 2-2 count with now the go-ahead run at third in Mendez. A 1-1 ball game. Here's the pitch. 
Breaking ball that misses wide. Now a full count to Zauer. On deck for Hidden Valley is Jack Matthew. The full count pitch. Popped foul behind home plate. And that will cause up another full count pitch. The right-hander pile. Again, working from the windup with the runner at third. Here it is. Hit hard, deep to left field. Austin, that one's going to die in left field. Looked like it was high enough, but just kind of died out there. Austin securing that one for the third out. The Mustangs score one in the inning on one base hit. They leave one stranded, and that will end the inning. One to one the score. We head to the top of the fourth on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. So lonely, I just sign more. Seems like I've been away forever. Wonder if you're coming home. I just saw your face. I know you're coming home. I swear there is no place. This is where unconditional love and immeasurable happiness reside. This is home. Coltwell Banker, where home begins. Getting ready for the top of the fourth inning. So far, this game tied up at one. One run on two hits, one error for Henley. They've left two runners on base. One run, two hits, no errors for Hidden Valley. They've left one run on base. Do up this half for Henley. Mark Carpenter, Owen Harper, and Max Price. The first pitch into Carpenter is called a strike. The 0-1 on the way from Carlisle. Here it is. Ripped into left field, but foul. 0-2. The count to Carpenter. Carpenter looking to take his time, walking back after that foul ball. Open to center himself in a two-strike count. Carpenter awaits the 0-2. Here it comes from Carlisle. Pop up in the infield. Second baseman Zauer under it, and he will make the catch for the first down. bring up Owen Harper he's 0 for 1 in this ball game grounded out to first in his first appearance did a good job in doing a long at bat did Harper but ended up coming up empty with a couple of runners in scoring position in the first inning mentioned Henley has two runners left on this game both of them were in scoring position in the first inning and now an 0-2 count to Owen Harper. One away in the top of the fourth. The Mustangs and the Hornets tied up at one. Here's the pitch from Carlisle. Swung on and missed. A dropped third strike. Burden comes up with it, and he will fire on to first in time. And that will be the second out of the inning, bringing up Max Price. Second strike out of the day for Carlisle. Price is 0 for 1 today, grounded out to shortstop in the second inning. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball out towards short. Mendez up with it. Fires on to first in time, and that will end the inning. The Hornets go down in order in the fourth, heading to the bottom half, tied at 1. This is Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Reds. There are many threads that run through our region. There are churches and schools and little league teams that bring us together and bind us into communities. There are roads and cars 
There are houses and jobs and businesses, all woven together to make the fabric of our communities. There are financial threads that are part of that tapestry as well. For over 80 years, it's been our pleasure to be headquartered here, providing financial services to generations of our friends and neighbors. From that first savings account, the retirement planning, and all of the cars and houses and groceries in between, we keep your money local, investing it back into our communities, adding more threads to the fabric to make our community stronger. Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. Find your path. Bottom of the fourth inning, tied up at one between the Hornets and the Mustangs. Jack Matthew, Caden Coonard, and Brock Lewis do up this half for Hidden Valley. By the way, quick note before we start the inning, the Henley softball team, playing up at the softball complex just over the right field fence. And right now, the Lady Hornets leading Hidden Valley 3 to nothing. And that pitch will come inside and hit Matthew, a leadoff base runner for Hidden Valley. And that will bring up Caden Cooner. Cooner one for one today, singled in the second and was out on the base paths in that inning. Batting from the left side, move over to first, back safely is Matthew. Hornets and the Mustangs, a storied rivalry in the Skyline Conference. Glad you could be with us today. Pitch will miss low, 1-0. and oh. Think of the battles these teams did in 2013 and 2014 on a couple of Henley's state championship runs back in those years. It was Hidden Valley who caused them issues, if anybody. A pitch hit into the gap for Coonert. And rounding second, heading for third is Matthew. And a single for Coonert puts runners at the corners with nobody away in the inning. Brings up Brock Lewis. Lewis 0 for 1 in the game. He flew out towards center field in his first at bat, but... This season for Lewis, only four RBI for him this season, but a prime opportunity. Just about anything could score the runner at third, Matthew. Middle infield, a double play depth. The corner's in for the Hornets, and the first pitch, a foul ball, 0 and 1. And back to this rivalry between these two teams. It was in 2015 and 2016 that Henley defeated Hidden Valley in the state playoffs, once in the quarterfinals and once in the semifinals. Not often that conference opponents get to play each other that deep into the postseason. But those years, coached by Tim Cleland for Henley and Mark Vidlak for Hidden Valley, a lot of battles between these two squads. The 0-2 misses outside, 1-2. and two. The count to Brock Lewis. A couple of years ago in the COVID-shortened 2021 season, Hidden Valley made its way to the state championship or the, the showcase game as it was that season. Here's the one-two to Lewis. Ripped into left field. That is caught by Austin, and the throw home will stop the runner, Matthew, from scoring. He's going to stay put at third. One away in the fourth. Brings up Maurizio Mendez. Mendez 0 for 1 today. A sophomore would have just missed out on the following season after Hidden Valley beat LeGrand in the 4A showcase when it was the following season in a OSAA-sanctioned state championship. Hidden Valley would lose to LeGrand the following season in the state title game. First pitch fouled off. 0 and 1 to Mendez. And that was... Coach Vidlak's final season here at Hidden Valley. And that's when their new head coach, Mr. Justin Spinner, took over the program. Strike two called against Mendez on the outer third. It's an 0-2 count to the Hidden Valley designated hitter. He's hitting instead of Ty Burden, the catcher. Here's the 0-2 on the way. 
taken. A pitch outside, one and two. Looking for a strikeout or a double play is Pyle. Look for this pitch to be low in the zone, maybe even out of the zone. The one, two is a ground ball towards short. Hayes on to second for one. Price turns the double play and the Hornets wiggle out of a jam in the fourth. The Mustangs leave one stranded at third. We go to the top of the fifth, still tied at one on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Sports was kind of what defined me as a person. I loved to play uh, every sport I could possibly play. The Abbey's was really the family stomping ground for all of our community. Saturday afternoon, soccer tournaments, we'd head over to Abbey's afterwards. And then when we got up into middle school, on our way home, we'd stop at Abbey's after basketball games. When I go home, I want to see two things when I drive through Winston. I want to see my Abbey's, and I want to see my high school. And those are the two memories that stick out the most to me. Top of the fifth inning, tied at one between Hidden Valley and the Henley Hornets. Henley on the road in this one as they bat in the top of the fifth inning. Lane Frank, Bo Pyle, and Luke Austin. That's 7-8-9 in the Henley order. And it'll be Frank to step in first. 0 for 1 today. He flew out to right field in his first at bat. First pitch to him is going to miss high and in. 1 and 0 to the Henley right fielder. Frank in his senior season. Here's the 1-0. Line drive, that'll get through into center field and a leadoff single for Frank as Henley is trying to get something going here in the top of the fifth. It's been a good day on the mound for Carlisle. That's only the third Hornets hit of the day here in the fifth inning. Bo Pyle steps in now as he bats with a runner aboard at first. He's 0 for 1 today. Carlisle comes set and checks to first. And the first baseman, Matthew, couldn't secure the baseball. If he had, Frank might have been caught flat-footed, but Matthew couldn't control the throw and skipped away from him. But Frank stayed put at first. Nothing really too crazy happening there. And now Carlisle focused on Pyle. Here's the pitch. Pyle showing bunt, lays one down. Okay, gets past Carlisle and no one's home. A bunt single. Moves Frank to second. Pyle aboard at first. A beautifully placed bunt skips past the pitcher. Carlisle out of reach of Matthew and nobody was there at second base to make the play. Couldn't draw up a better bunt there from Bo Pyle. That brings up Luke Austin. He's one for one today. Doubled and scored in the third inning. Austin batting 455 this season and has nine RBI this year. Here's the pitch. He shows bunt as well. That one's laid down the third baseline and will roll foul. Good job there by Carlisle to wait for that one to completely stop rolling and field it in foul territory. So just 0-1 the count. Luke Austin back uh, yesterday in the 18 to nothing win over Mazama hit his first home run of the season when him and Bo Pyle went back to back in the second inning. Steps back in now facing an 0-1 count with Pyle at first and Frank at second. Nobody out in the top of the fifth. The pitch, that's going to be laid down again for a bunt. This is fielded by Matthew. He's going to go to first for the one out, but now two runners in scoring position for Peyton Price. Price so far today, 0 for 2. He has flown out and grounded out in two at-bats so far. Infield in for Hidden Valley. They're going to try to cut down the lead runner and hold on to a tie ball game. Here's the pitch. 
That one misses in side to Peyton Price. Had to duck out of the way of it. 1-0 to the Henley center fielder. Talked about what Luke Austin did against Henley yesterday. Peyton Price didn't have too much opportunity. Subbed out of the game fairly quickly, but did finish one for three in that contest. And the 1-0 to him is going to be taken low and away for ball two. On deck, Connor Shively waiting for the Hornets. First base is open, so you don't have to throw a pitch right down the middle, even behind in the count if you're Carlisle. The 2-0. That'll miss inside 3-0 to Peyton Price. From the windup, the pitch. That is taken for strike two. It looked like Price might have been taken all the way on that one, so the count moves to three and one to the right-handed batter. Price, the Henley senior, stares down, and Carlisle steps off looking for a new pitch. Looks like he found it. Here's the 3-1. That was a beautiful breaking pitch, but it missed inside. And a walk loads the bases for Connor Shively. Price at first, Pyle at second, Frank at third. And Connor Shively steps to the plate. He's 0 for 2 today, a couple of ground outs. Corners in for Hidden Valley, the middle infield looking for a double play with one out in the top of the fifth, the pitch. That one is going to find the zone on the outer third. 0 oh and 1. <laughs> well, that pitch graced the outer third. Umpire saying right down the middle. Now, Hidden Valley had a problem earlier in the season where home plate was a little bit off center. It was shaded to the right side a bit. Doesn't look like that anymore, but who knows if the strike zone moved along with home plate. It's an 0 oh 1 count to Shively. The pitch. Shively lifts one into foul territory. And an 0-2 count to the Henley catcher. On deck is Aiden Hayes. Again, one out in the top of the fifth inning. A 1-1 ball game between the Hornets and the Mustangs. And the bases are juiced for Henley and Connor Shively. Carlisle toes the rubber. Looks in and gathers the sign from Burden. Shakes him off once, shakes him off twice. Now decides on a pitch. Here it is. That one will skip away from the catcher, Burden. And stuck at third. Frank didn't break for the plate, and now everybody's stuck on the base paths. They tried to throw back to first to get Price, but Frank didn't make the play moving home, and almost everybody was moving up to the next base. That could have been catastrophic. They're going to say they're trying to tag the runner at second. I don't think that Pyle made it to third, and he didn't, so... He's going to remain safe at second. Again, that was almost a catastrophe for Henley on the base paths. A rare mental miscue for the Hornets. Keeps the bases loaded in a 1-2 count to Connor Shively. Carlisle shakes off Burden again. Shakes him off twice again. He's looking for his pitch, and he knows what it is, but he steps off. But he knows what pitch he wants to throw. Corners in for Hidden Valley. Middle infield still looking for the double play with one out. Carlisle delivers. Hard ground ball towards second. Zauer going to second for one. The turn is late, and Frank will come in to score. Out is Price at second. Shively reaches on the fielder's choice. Give him the RBI, and Henley leads 2 to nothing. Aiden Hayes now batting with runners at the corners. Pyle to third. Shively at first. Hayes is one for two today. He's singled and grounded out so far. And they're going to want Matthew on the bag holding Shively there. He leads the team in stolen bases this season, even as the catcher. Shively with five stolen bags this season. And they're going to try to figure out how to deal with him. The catcher, Burden, comes out and delivers signals to his infield but now back behind the dish. 
Two outs in the top of the fifth. Henley leads Hidden Valley 2-1. to one. First pitch finds the zone, 0-1. Oh the count to Aiden Hayes. Hayes this season batting 388, 17 RBI this year. That's second on the team. A runner stands 90 feet away. It's Pyle. The 0-1. Taken outside for ball one. Mark Carpenter waits on deck. Open for an opportunity, maybe this inning. Hornets would have to score another run, and Hayes would have to get on base. This season, Hayes has done a nice job of getting on base, does it 50% of the time as he takes an off-speed pitch outside, 2-1. and one. Hayes up on the plate, protecting the outer third. Carlisle has generally worked there so far this game. Checks the runner at first, now comes set. Kicks and fires. Flared out towards shallow right field, and that'll get down for a base knock. Scoring from third is Pyle. Rounding second, headed for third is Connor Shively, and in at second is Aiden Hayes. An RBI double puts the Hornets ahead 3-1. to one. Now Mark Carpenter bats. The team leader in RBI at 28. He leads that metric by 11. Runs batted in. The next closest I get mentioned is Aiden Hayes with 17. Now bats with two runners in scoring position. And two away in the top of the fifth. Henley leads 3-1. Carpenter takes the first pitch. 1-0. and Carpenter has hit three home runs in the past two games for Henley. Two against Klamath Union. That was back on Thursday and won yesterday against Mazama. Carpenter, hard grounder towards third. Up with it is Lewis. He's going to fire on to first, and they're going to say he got him. A bang-bang play at first, but Carpenter is out on the throw, but the Hornets do score two in the inning. On three base hits, they leave two stranded. They lead three to one as we head to the bottom half of the fifth on 104 50 Sports and MyBasin.com. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. About to begin the bottom of the fifth inning between the Hornets and the Hidden Valley Mustangs. Henley plated two runs in the top half, but now it's Hidden Valley's turn to try and respond. To do it will be Connor Graham, Ethan Carlisle, and Mason Klipfeld at 7-8-9 in the Hidden Valley order. Graham has a single today. He's one for one, but an important half inning for Henley. Their bats looked good in the top half. For Bo Pyle, you're looking to get these outs quick if you can, but don't rush it. You want to get your bats back up to the plate and keep it rolling. But again, you can't lose yourself out there. Pyle has pitched a very good ball game today. Here's his first pitch of this inning. It's a ground ball out towards third. Carpenter dives for it, but it skips off his glove, and that'll be a single for Graham, making him two for two today. And a leadoff base runner for the Mustangs as they try to answer the call in the bottom of the fifth. Ethan Carlisle bats now for Hidden Valley. He is 0 for 1 today, struck out in the third. 
one of four Hidden Valley batters to strike out this game. Shows bunt, lays one down in front of the pitcher. Pyle going to take the easy play to first for one, but advancing to second on the play was Connor Graham. One away in the bottom of the fifth and a runner in scoring position for Mason Clipfell. Clipfell 0 for 1 today. He popped out to the third baseman Carpenter back in the third inning. Clipfell this season last on the team in batting average for starting players for Hidden Valley hitting 190. He calls time at the plate. Looking to get his mind right before a big at-bat in this ball game. He represents the tying run at the plate. The pitch. Swung on and missed. A nice pitch there by Pyle. Looked to be the curveball. Started in the zone and broke out. And had Clipfell chasing it. Coming set is Pyle. And he delivers. That one in the dirt. Under the glove of Shively and behind him. Graham will advance to third. One of the few, few pass balls that we've seen this season from Connor Shively. The count now one and one. That pitch will miss. Now two and one to Clipfell. On deck, the top of the Hidden Valley order. It's Wiley Mendez. A 2-1. On the way from Pyle, again working from the windup, he finds the zone there, two and two. Here's the two-two home. That one will miss and the count runs full. Hidden Valley has done a great job today of seeing a lot of pitches from Pyle. Even so, Pyle has only issued two free passes this game, one on a walk and one on a hit batter. The full count pitch home. That one misses high and tight. That'll be his second walk of the game. And runners at the corners for Wiley Mendez. Mendez, the Hidden Valley junior, batting 386 this season. He's tied for the team lead in RBI with 15 on the year. Great opportunity with the tying run on base and he's taking off for second. Cliff fell while well, he looked like he was jetting for second but then turns back to head to first and he'll stay there. It's a 1-0 count to Mendez. Again, he was the batter who walked back in the third but was left stranded at third in that inning. A foul ball. One and one, and it looked like Clipfell was on the move again. Hidden Valley ran this action back in the third when they scored their run. Was a steal and score. Henley played it well, but just couldn't make the throw home. A 1-1 count to Mendez, and a check over to first, and Clipfell back safely. See if he's on the move again. Decent lead off of first, in a good stance to... Make things interesting on the base pads. He's not going, and a curveball had Mendez reaching. It's a ball and two strikes to the Hidden Valley shortstop. Checking the runner at first is Pyle, now set. Here's the one-two home. Swung on and missed, throw down to second to try to get the runners not in time. Runner from third takes off to score and does. So Graham scores, it was a strikeout at the plate, and Clipfell advances to second. A hectic play to be sure, but I guess give Mendez the RBI. Hidden Valley now trailing only by one and trying to get to third. Trying to catch the Henley defense sleeping, but instead it's Clipfell. He tried to get aggressive and move over to third, and Henley's defense caught him out there. That will end the inning. In a surprising fashion, both teams are mixing things up on the base pads. We'll see if that's really how this inning ends. The batter for Hidden Valley Zauer staying at the plate, and the head coach Spinner going out to talk with the umpire. Although we don't have replay here at Hidden Valley High School, it did look close, but I think that's going to end the inning. 
Henley escapes, still leading 3-2. to two. Hidden Valley scores one in the inning on one base hit. We head to the top of the sixth on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 120,000 participants here in Oregon who take part in high school sports or activities. Top of the sixth inning, Owen Harper leading things off for Henley. They lead three to two. Three runs for Henley coming on five hits, one error. They've left four runners on base. Hidden Valley, two runs, four hits, no errors. They have left three runners on base in the ball game, and it's a 1-1 count at the plate to Owen Harper. Harper 0 for 2 today, a ground, ground out and a strikeout. And he's now going to be 1 and 2 in the count. It looks like Mark Carpenter getting ready to warm up in the Henley bullpen as you saw him run across the screen right there if you're watching on MyBasin.com. The 1-2 one, on its way to Harper, swung on and missed. He's down on strikes for the second time today. And that will bring up Max Price. Price also 0 for 2 today. A couple of ground outs to shortstop in his first two at-bats. He's going to take ball one outside, 1-0. and 0. Carpenter had pitched yesterday, but only one inning against Mazama. See if he ends up making an appearance in this ball game. As that one will miss wide, 2-0. These two teams will meet again in just two days' time on Thursday right back here at Hidden Valley High School. The 2-0 on its way to Price. That one is taken low, 3-0. Good job by Price here trying to work uh, a base runner. He's seeing some pitches and doing a good job ahead in the count, 3-0. Price taken all the way there, but that one will find the outer third, maybe a bit low in the zone as well to Price. It's three balls and a strike to the freshman second baseman for the Hornets. Here's the 3-1. Hit hard to left field. That will wind up foul. And the count runs full. Three and two. A nice job this at-bat by Carlisle now to battle back into the at-bat after being down 3-0. One away in the top of the sixth. Henley leads Hidden Valley 3-2. to two. The full count pitch home. That will miss inside. And aboard at first is Max Price. That brings up Lane Frank. He's one for two today. Flew out in the second but singled and would score a run in the fifth inning that Henley earned their lead with. Again, they're up by a run, 3-2. to two. Small lead off of first by Price. Carlisle set. Price taking off for second. The throw down is high and safe. In at second is Price. Still in the back there and getting into scoring position on a pitch that was called a ball at the plate for Max Price this season. Call that stolen base number five on the year. Big lead off of second. Carlisle checks him, stares him down, delivers the 1-0 to the plate. Frank swings and misses. A ball and a strike to the Henley senior right fielder. One and one. On deck, Bo Pyle. Carlisle. 
Coming set, looking at the runner. Now pitches. That one comes in eye level to Frank, almost bounced off his helmet. Probably heard the laces whiz by him, but taken for ball two, two and one. Second baseman Zauer kind of holding the runner at second, so a fairly large gap on the right side of the infield. Frank will take a ball there that skipped away from the catcher burden for just a moment, but nothing doing out there on the base paths for Price. He'll remain at second base in a 3-1 count to Frank as Carlisle back on the mound. Burden delivers the sign. Set up right down the middle. In fact, a pickoff to second. Price back safely. Price aboard on a walk earlier this inning. And Burden going to just have a quick talk out there with Kyle. It seems, even though Carlisle has had a very productive game, that they just haven't been on the same page. A lot of shakeoffs from Carlisle. He seems to want to call his own game out there. And again, it, it has worked, but just wanting to make sure that they're on the same page. The 3-1 home to Frank is swung on and missed. And a 3-2 count to Lane Frank. And Carpenter returning to the Henley dugout seems to have warmed up in the bullpen sufficiently, maybe enough to possibly enter in the next inning. Carlisle, again, shaking off Burden out there on the mound. Finally coming set, the full count pitch to Lane Frank. Frank, a hard grounder to third. Up with it is Lewis. Now breaking for third is Price after the throw. And that one's going to get away from Lewis on the throw back. And Price is going to score on an error. And Henley leads now 4-2. to two. First error committed by Hidden Valley, and it leads to a run. A big insurance run here in the sixth inning for Henley, although I don't think anyone thinks it's enough. Bo Pyle now bats with two outs in the top of the sixth, and he rips one into the right center field gap. That could be extra bases. A big turn around first, but he will stay put at first, and that'll bring up Luke Austin after a two-out single for the Hornets. That'll bring up Luke Austin again. He's one for two today. He doubled and scored in the third and grounded out in the fifth inning. Mentioned the home run he hit yesterday, and he leads the team in average batting, or pardon me, second on the team in average at 455 in the nine hole for the Hornets. Carlisle set and delivers. That one will miss inside as Austin got out of the way of that one. Henley dug out, telling him to wear that one. It looked to be the two-seam fastball. Kind of started at the hands and then broke even more towards the right-handed hitting Austin. But he's ahead in the count, 1-0. The pitch. That one will miss way high and get to the backstop. Advancing to second is Pyle. And a wild pitch that was nowhere near the zone for Carlisle allows Austin to bat now with the runner in scoring position. And looks like we're going to see a visit from Hidden Valley pitching coach. And a time to remind you today, you know, at Hidden Valley High School, only two umpires here, uh, whereas at home we've got three. Of course, you'd like three at every game, but the reason for that is the official shortage in the state of Oregon. And the OSA is always recruiting officials. So if you'd like to stay in shape and be involved in a sport you love, you can earn some money in the process, you should become an athletic official, whether it's for uh, baseball, softball. Uh, I know they're always looking for wrestling and volleyball officials as well, even basketball around the state. Visit osaa.org backslash officials for more information and how to get registered. It is a 2-0 count to Luke Austin. Runner aboard at second is Bo Pyle, and Henley leads 4-2 in the top of the sixth inning. Carlisle remains in the game. 
Just looking to recenter after an ugly wild pitch. Here's the 2-0. That one in the dirt. Burden, a nice job of keeping it in front of him. 3-0. And again, I, I, I suppose not really dirt here at Hidden Valley is the artificial turf infield, which was put in about five seasons ago. And home plate umpire going to come out and I think just dust off the rubber particles or the, I don't quite know what you would call them, but since this turf field is aging a little bit, um, you do see a lot more of those rubber kind of pieces in the turf infield. I'm not quite sure what we're still waiting on, but we look ready to go. Okay, a 3-0 count to Austin. On deck is Peyton Price, still two away in the top of the sixth. Henley leads 4-2. Set is Carlisle. Checks the runner at second, now delivers home. That pitch in the dirt. And a two-out walk to Austin will bring up Peyton Price. Price batting at the top of the order. He's 0 for 2 today, has flown out and grounded out. He also walked in the fifth, but was cut out on the base pass. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball towards short. Over is Mendez. Bobbles it on the transfer, and everybody's safe. Base is loaded for Connor Shively. Two errors this inning for Hidden Valley, and a big opportunity for Connor Shively. Pile at third. Austin at second, and Price at first. Shively today is 0 for 3. He grounded out twice and reached on a fielder's choice. But an opportunity to come up big. Working out of the windup is Carlisle. Biggest at bat of the game so far. With Henley leading by two in the top of the six. The pitch to Shively. That's hit in the air towards left and foul. 0-1. Shively again the team leader in batting average. 5-51 this season. And he's got 11 RBI this year. Behind the count, 0-1. After he flared one foul towards left. Again, Shively typically hitting it to the opposite field. Carlisle shaking off burden. And time is called by the catcher Shively. Or the hitter Shively, I should say. Playing catcher for Henley today. Here's the pitch to him. Shively takes one in the dirt, a ball and a strike. Connor Shively, the sophomore for Henley, awaits the 1-1 pitch. Here it is from Carlisle. That one will come inside and hit Shively, and that will score a Henley run. They lead 5-2. Carlisle remains in the ball game. Aiden Hayes to bat now for Henley. He's two for three, a double and a single. He's also grounded out in the ball game. Bats with the bases loaded and two outs in the top of the sixth. The pitch taken low, one and oh. Henley's already scored two runs this inning as they lead by three. Carlisle again shaking off Burden. The 1-0. That one will miss. 2-0. Carlisle and Burden, both seniors, the battery for Hidden Valley. But again... Carlisle has been shaking him off quite a bit today. Here's the 2-0. Ripped into left field, but it bends foul. 2-1. The count to Aiden Hayes. On deck, Mark Carpenter. Austin at third. Price at second. Shively at first for Henley. Here's the 2-1. 
Swung on and missed. A nice change up there by Carlisle. Evens the count at two for Aiden Hayes. Hayes going to protect the outside part of the plate. Here's the pitch. Hayes fouls it off. A pitch that was outside. Again, protecting there in a 2-2 count. The 2-2 again to Hayes. That one will come in and hit him back-to-back. Hit batters and back-to-back runs scored for Henley. Doesn't matter quite how they score. You'll take it as that will score Austin from third, Price to third, Shively to second, and Hayes now aboard at first. And that could spell the end of the afternoon for Ethan Carlisle, and it will. He leaves after loading up the bases on a couple of hit batters as his team trails 6-2. to two. We'll get the defensive subs for you coming up as we continue your coverage of Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports. Wait. All I do is wait. I'm so lonely, I just sigh and mourn. Seems like I've been away forever. Wonder. to hit but just ahead in the count three and one that pitch will miss wide and a walk will score a run so Henley now leading seven to two and an inning that has completely ran away from the Mustangs Henley has plated four runs in this inning and that will bring up Owen Harper. Harper swings and misses at the first pitch. Owen one. Two outs in this inning. And the bases remain loaded. Count now, ball and a strike to Harper. Who is struck out to start this inning. The 1-1 from Cooner. That one will miss. Kick to the backstop. Looking to score from third is Shively. And he will. That will advance Hayes to third and Carpenter to second. On another wild pitch this inning and another run scored for Henley as they lead 8-2. Harper 0 for 3 today. But an opportunity to try to keep the rally going. Here's the pitch. That one will miss in the dirt and skip away from the catcher burden. And another run will score for Henley as they lead 9-2. Carpenter to third, and a 3-1 count to Owen Harper. 
Six runs have come across to score for Henley in this inning. And they've committed two errors and wild pitches as well and a walk delivered to Harper. Puts runners at the corners for Max Price. Price walked and would score earlier this inning. Steps in now against the left-handed hitting Cooner. Here's the pitch. A throw over to first. Back safely is Harper. Here's the 1-1. Again, a check over to the runner at, Har uh, at first is Harper. And... As much as I know Owen Harper, he's not particularly a stolen base threat. He has stolen three bases this season. The pitch home, taken wide, 1-0. and Hidden Valley having trouble just throwing strikes this inning. It's what they've done well in the first five innings. But it's been one of the reasons why Henley's been able to jump all over this pitching staff in this half. Again, six runs have scored. 1-0 the count to Price. Here's the pitch. That one will again miss low. 2-0. And, oh. and just to recap the last five batters for you. In fact, the last six batters. Going back to Owen Harper. Walk, walk, hit by pitch, hit by pitch, error, and a walk. And that's how most of these runs have scored for Henley. Their last base hit. Wasn't until Bo Pyle batted about seven batters ago. It's a 2-0 count to Max Price. And another pitch that misses outside 3-0. On deck, Lane Frank, who grounded out earlier this inning. The 3-0. That one will miss high, and another walk issued by Hidden Valley pitchers will advance Harper to second. Staying at third is Carpenter. And that'll bring up Lane Frank. First pitch to Frank. That one will miss high, 1-0. and oh. Henley batters might just be content to take until a Hidden Valley pitcher can find the zone. Three consecutive walks given up. That's everybody who's on the base pads. And another pitch that misses high, 2-0. and oh. Coonard looks in for the 2-0, the pitch. That one was in the zone and popped into the infield. Over is the shortstop, Mendez, and he will make the catch to end the bleeding this inning for Hidden Valley. The Hornets, they plate six runs, and they only have one base hit to show for it. They lead 9-2 to two as we head to the bottom of the sixth on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. It was kind of what lined me as a person. I love to play uh, every sport I could possibly play. The Abbey's was really the family stomping ground for all of our community. Saturday afternoon soccer tournaments, we'd head over to Abbey's afterwards. And then when we got up into middle school, on our way home, we'd stop at Abbey's after basketball game. When I go home, I want to see two things when I drive through Winston. I want to see my Abbey's and I want to see my high school. And those are the two memories that stick out the most to me.
Back with you for the bottom of the sixth inning as Henley Baseball continues on 104.3 and 960 Sports in MyBasin.com. Henley leading Hidden Valley 9-2 to after plating six runs in the top half of the sixth. Bo Pyle remains on the bump for Henley. And just to check in, again, the uh, Henley softball team taking on Hidden Valley just over the right field fence at the softball complex. The Lady Hornets lead Hidden Valley 8-2. to Again, a 9-2 to game here. And the first pitch will miss inside. 1-0 and oh, the count to Elijah Zauer, the leadoff hitter this inning. It's 2-3-4 due up for Hidden Valley this half. The 1-0 will find the zone, a ball and a strike to Zauer, who's 0 for 2 today. Struck out in the first and flew out in the third. The 1-0. Or pardon me, the 1-1 will miss 2-1. and one. So Zauer, Matthew, and Cooner do up for Hidden Valley as they try to claw back into this game against Bo Pyle, who's looked fairly good in this performance again. A 2-2 two and two count after that fastball found the outside part of the plate to Zauer. And Pyle ready to deliver. Here's the pitch. Lined into left field and down in front of Austin. A leadoff single for Hidden Valley if they're going to do it some way. That's a good way to start for the Mustangs. Their fifth base hit of the ball game. A leadoff single in the sixth brings up Jack Matthew. Matthew 0 for 1 today, struck out in the first and was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Fouls one back, 0 and 1. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, we'll be back on Thursday when these two teams meet again right here at Hidden Valley High School. Scheduled start time again, 5 o'clock. It's the 0-1 on the way to Matthew, a curveball that's hit into center field. Price over a couple of steps underneath it to make the catch for the first step. One away for Caden Kuhnert, who is two for two. A couple of singles for him, but has been left stranded both times. The left-handed hitter now pitching for Hidden Valley. See if he can get on base to try to help out his own cause and get back into this ball game. The first pitch is going to be taken high, 1-0. and oh. Pyle, the right-hander, comes set and delivers. That pitch will miss in the dirt, 2-0. and oh. The count to Caden Kuhnert. This season for Kuhnert, batting 400 on the season. In the cleanup spot in the lineup for Hidden Valley. That pitch will find the zone two and one. Kuhnert again also tied for the team lead in RBI with Matthew. Both standing at 15. That one is hit into the air left field. Austin coming in and will make the catch for the second out. That will bring up Brock Lewis. 0 for 2 today, a couple of flyouts, one to center field, one to left field. And Pyle working from the stretch. Looks in and gathers the sign from Shively, who sets up outside the pitch. Swung on and missed, an elevated two-seam fastball, 0 and 1. The count to Brock Lewis. At first is Zauer. He reached on a leadoff single. As the second pitch to Lewis is swung on and missed. An 0-2 count to the Hidden Valley third baseman. Shively sets up on the outside. That pitch in the dirt. Shively doing a nice job of knocking it down as it skipped to the plate. A ball and two strikes. The count to Lewis. On deck, Mauricio Mendez. The Hornets... Try to keep things right where they are, up by seven. Here's the one-two. Fouled back. Count remains, a ball and two strikes. Small lead off of first by Zauer, nothing remarkable. The one-two. Hit into right field. 
over is Frank. Drops the cap, but makes the catch to retire the side. One base hit in the inning for the Mustangs, but nothing across the board. They still trail 9-2 as we head to the 7th on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Sports was kind of what defined me as a person. I love to play uh, every sport I could. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So turn here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Getting ready for the seventh inning at Hidden Valley High School in a Skyline Conference matchup. The winner here will have sole possession of first place in the conference, and so far the Hornets lead by seven. They're up nine to two in the top of the seventh inning. Due up this half for Hidden Valley. It's going to be Bo Pyle, then Luke Austin and Peyton Price. It's eight nine one in the Henley order. Pyle today. Two for three, a couple of singles, a strikeout. He's also scored two runs in the ball game today. He's up 2-0 over uh, Caden Coonard. Again, six runs scored at the top of the sixth for Henley. And well, they only needed one base hit to do it. A ground ball towards third. Kicks off the glove of Lewis. And reaching base there is Bo Pyle. We're going to have a runner come in for Pyle, the pitcher, and Carson Sims will be on the base paths for Henley. Lead off base runner. It looks like they're giving him the hit as well. It was a tough play to make for Lewis. And that pitch missed wide. Maybe a pitch out. They try to back pick Sims, but he dives back safely. It's a 1-0 count at the plate to Austin, who has doubled, grounded out, and walked. He's scored two runs in this game. The 1-0 in the dirt, 2-0. Kunert just having to come in and throw strikes has proven difficult in this game. 2-0, the pitch. It's a move over to first, actually. Back safely is Sims. He's not getting too big of a lead off of first, but still having to read the knee of the left-handed pitching Cooner. Pitch outside, misses 3-0. and That's what they, they tell you, at least. You want to look to see if the knee kind of crosses his body in the pitching motion, then he can't make the move back over to first. But if his knee stays straight to first base, he can either throw or make the move to first. Just a different kind of thing for the base runner at first to worry about as the 3-0 pitch misses outside, and that brings up Peyton Price. To second is Sims, and Price at the plate. He reached on a walk and, well, actually, pardon me, he's reached on a walk and an error in this game. In the sixth inning, he reached on an E6 and would score in that inning. Again, Henley scored six runs in that inning, and it looks like we're going to have Coach Justin Spinner of Hidden Valley come out and talk with his team. And it looks like he is going to be taking the ball from Kunert 
And we may be having a substitution here, and that will be the end of the day for Cooner. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll get the changes for you. Hidden Valley uh, in a bit of a situation against Henley. They trail 9-2, to two, the Hornets in front. This is Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Well, not corporate. At Clownfall Subaru, we built our business on that simple promise. Well, that and some of the best people you're ever going to meet. Hi, I'm Rob Cedar, General Manager at Clown Falls Subaru. Our 62 employees make it easy for us to live up to our comfortable, not corporate philosophy. Friendly faces, easy answers, straight talk, fairness, and exceptional service. These are the things you expect. These are the things that all of our people deliver. Our management team, sales pros, certified service and body shop techs, lot attendants, and detail experts are all 100% focused on you. Local people putting their friends and neighbors first. At Clown Falls Subaru, that's the only way we do business. It's comfortable, not corporate. Our team members also spend hundreds of hours each year supporting local charities and events through the Subaru Love Promise. That's the kind of people they are. We're very proud of them. They're your friends, they're your neighbors, they're glad to know you, and they want you to be glad to know them too. I'm Rob, and this is what makes us comfortable, not corporate. Back at the top of the seventh inning, and Henley leading Hidden Valley 9-2. to two. Got a new pitcher in for the Mustangs, and it's going to be Logan Law. We'll get you a look at Law in just a moment, but the rest of the changes for uh, Hidden Valley. We'll just reset the whole defense for you. Behind the dish is still Burden. Lewis at third. Mendez at short. Zauer at second. Carlisle still at first. In the outfield, Matthew in left. Clipfell in center and Graham in right. Let's take a look at this season for Logan Law. As a matter of fact, this is only his second appearance of the season and he's only pitched one inning other than this one today. But the task for Law just come in and throw strikes as this game has gotten away from Hidden Valley by virtue of hit batters, walks, and errors. And it's the top of the Henley order. Peyton Price batting with nobody out of the top of the seventh. Sims at second, Austin at first. Here's the pitch from Law. Showing bunt, but pulling back in time to watch ball one cross the plane. Again, Price reached on an error in that big sixth inning for Henley and would come around to score. Lead off a second by Sims. A smaller lead off a first by Austin. Here's the 1-0. Showing bunt and pulling back again for a ball. 2-0. Logan Law, a freshman, the lone freshman on the Hidden Valley roster. The 2-0 home. Bouncing ball out towards short. Mendez charging. He's going to drop the ball on the transfer. Tried to go to second, but couldn't make the throw, and the bases are loaded for Connor Shively. Another Hidden Valley error marks three in the past two innings for the Mustangs. They have let this game slip and slide, and now bases loaded for Connor Shively. Shively was hit by a pitch in the sixth inning. As he fouls the first pitch off there, 0 and 1. Otherwise, Shively has flown out, pardon me, he's grounded out twice and reached on a fielder's choice in the fifth, knocked in an RBI in doing so. Bats here at the base is loaded and nobody out in the seventh. The 0-1. Taken for a strike. 0 oh, and 2 now to Shively. On deck is Aiden Hayes. Law working from the windup delivers the 0 oh, 2. It's a nice curveball that Shively had to foul off. It was a really nice curveball from Law, truthfully. Started away, broke back over the plate. Might have been left a little high but or a little high in the zone rather you want that pitch to miss low but good job by Shively as well to battle it off it's an 0-2 count to the Henley catcher here's the pitch Shively fouls it off again 0-2 staying alive in this at bat 
Again, Sims aboard at third. Luke Austin aboard at second. And Price aboard at first. Law looking in. And wraps one into left field, pardon me, right field for an RBI single. Now rounding third and headed home is Austin. He is going to score as well. Two runs in for the Hornets as they lead 11 to two. Sim scored, Austin scored. Price to third and aboard at first after the single is Shively. Stepping in now, Aiden Hayes. Hayes takes strike one. Owen won the count to him with runners at the corners and still nobody out in the inning. And that pitch misses, a ball and a strike now. One and one. The count to Hayes. Pitch is popped up, out of play foul. The count will move now to one and two. Checking the runner at first, it's Shively. And that pitch will miss high. Count now two balls and two strikes to Aiden Hayes. Hayes this season, we've talked about batting 388, but gets on base to the clip of 50%. A 2-2 count to the Henley shortstop and the pitch. Is going to miss low, breaking from sec or breaking from first to head to second, rather, is Shively. He'll get in there safely after no throw down and a full count. Opens up first base. But you don't want to face the guy next with the bases loaded. It's Mark Carpenter. The 3-2 from Law. Hit on a line into center field. And the catch is made by Klipfell. And then they throw to second to get the runner who should have been tagging Shively broke for third right away in a double play. Does score one as Price scored on the sacrifice. An 8-4 double play and an RBI for Hayes brings up Mark Carpenter with two outs and the base is empty. Carpenter is with how to hit today. He walked in the sixth inning, has grounded out, flown out, and reached on a dropped third strike error and takes strike one there, 0-1. Oh so I guess all things considered, you don't face Carpenter with the bases loaded. A run does score, makes it 12-2 Henley. And here's the 0-1 oh to Carpenter. Swung on and missed. Carpenter just about swung out of his shoes on that pitch, 0-2. Oh Carpenter back in, awaits the 0-2 as Law steps off. Now back on the rubber, looking in for this pitch. Here it is, the 0-2. A curveball that Carpenter lofts into shallow right field. That one will get down for a base hit. Carpenter takes a big turn, heads for second, slides in safely. And a lame duck base hit turns into a double for Mark Carpenter. And... Owen Harper to bat now. 
Still with two away and just a runner at second for Henley. It is hit number eight on the ball game. Owen Harper today, a couple of strikeouts, a ground out and a walk. He is hitless today. Carpenter, decent lead off a of second. First pitch to Harper is in the turf, 1-0. We mentioned that the Henley softball team was playing today. I'll try to get you a final score from there as it looks like people had been leaving the softball complex. Harper pops one up, foul, and that'll be out of play. Ball and a strike to the Henley first baseman. Let's take a look. And it looks like as far as I can tell, an 8-3 final score in favor of the Hornets at the softball complex, and Harper takes ball two there. Although on my stat sheet it does say the game is delayed. I'll try to find out a true final score for you in a moment. Pitch in the dirt, skips away from Bird, and now advancing to third is going to be Carpenter. He took a big turn, might have gotten hungry to score on that play, but will instead stay put at third base in a 3-1 count to Owen Harper. Two away in the top of the seventh inning, a game that Henley leads Hidden Valley 12-2. After Harper, Max Price waits on deck, the 3-1 is in the dirt away from Burden. Carpenter will score with ease. And now aboard at first is Owen Harper. He's walked for the second time today. Henley now leads 13 to two. First pitch to Max Price, taken for a strike up in the zone. Price has walked in his last two plate appearances, otherwise he's grounded out twice. That's now with a runner aboard at first. And two away, the 0-1. Flared foul. 0-2 the count to Price. He awaits the 0-2 pitch. Coming from Law. A big bending curveball got him looking. That was a beautiful pitch to freeze up Max Price. The Hornets go down after scoring four runs in the inning. It took them three base hits to do it. They leave one stranded. They lead 13-2, heading to the bottom of the seventh. We'll continue your coverage of Henley Baseball next on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 120,000 participants here in Oregon who take part in high school sports or activities. Back with you for Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Bottom of the seventh inning ahead. And Mauricio Mendez, Connor Graham, and Ethan Carlisle to try to get the rally started for Hidden Valley as they trail Henley 13-2. Bo Pyle looking to close out a complete game 
would be his second of conference play. Here's the 1-0. That pitch will find the zone, a ball and a strike to Mauricio Mendez. He's 0 for 2 today, has grounded out and grounded into a double play. The 1-1 one, one will miss inside, 2 and 1. Six runs for Henley in the sixth, four more in the seventh, and that's not counting the one they scored in the third and the two they scored in the fifth. That's how they've got 13 runs in the ball game. And worth mentioning at a 2-2 count, one of those beautiful backdrops in Oregon for a baseball game, those rolling hills of the Rogue Valley you see over the center field fence and as the sun sets behind us. It stays on those mountains for quite some time. Just some beautiful scenery here at Hidden Valley High School. The 2-2 is a ground ball out towards Carpenter, and he will toss it on to first in time for the first out. Brings up Connor Graham. He's two for two today, a couple of singles. He's also scored twice in the ball game. Looking to start. A rally for the Mustangs. They trail by 11. Here's the pitch from Pyle. In the turf, 1-0 and from Pyle. Right-hander has worked very well today, only allowing five hits against Hidden Valley today. And the pitch finds the inner third of the plate, a ball and a strike to Pyle. Line drive into center field on the 1-1, down for a base hit. And Connor Graham aboard at first. That'll bring up Ethan Carlisle. Carlisle batting 440 this season, leading his team in batting average. Kind of guy you want to bat here and keep a rally going. And it looks like we might be seeing a pitching change for Henley. Mark Carpenter had been warming up in the bullpen earlier. We'll see if coach makes the move here. And he will. That will be it for Bo Pyle. Carpenter coming in relief. We'll give him time to warm up, and we'll step aside. Henley baseball as they lead 13-2 over Hidden Valley on 104.3 and 960 Sports in MyBasin.com. This is where unconditional love and immeasurable happiness reside. This is home. Coltwell Banker, where home begins. New pitcher on the mound for Henley. It's going to be Mark Carpenter. He comes in relief of Bo Pyle here in the bottom of the seventh inning, a game that Henley leads 13-2 to and did confirm the final score out at softball for you. The Hornets remain undefeated in conference play. They won 8-3. to And some of the Lady Hornets joining us now to watch their team hopefully close out a convincing win against Hidden Valley. Again, Mark Carpenter coming in relief of Bo Pyle. This is Carpenter's second appearance in as many days. Let's take a look at Carpenter this season for the Hornets. He has worked 22 innings. This will be his eighth appearance of the season, his fifth out of the bullpen in a sub-1 ERA, .31. His first task, Ethan Carlisle. First pitch to Carlisle is going to find the zone 0-1.
Carlisle today 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out thus far in the game. Here's the pitch from Carpenter. That one will skip away from the catcher, Shively. Advancing to second is Graham. And a ball and a strike to Carlisle. No lights here at Hidden Valley High School, so with the sun setting behind us, a bit darker on the field. The 1-1 will miss wide, 2-1. and one. I have seen instances where it gets too dark to play and they delay the game, although don't see that happening with just a few more outs to go if Carpenter can wrap this game up. A 2-1 count to Carlisle in the pitch. Swung on and missed on the running fastball from Carpenter. 2-2. Two and two. Mark Carpenter has a lot of movement on each of his pitches that he throws. Doesn't throw a typical four seam, although he can mix it in there. But the running fastball that runs away from right-handed hitters, and it has such late break to it as well. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. The count remains. 2-2. Two and two. Runner aboard at second. It's Connor Graham. He had a single with one out in the inning. That's where we still are. And Henley leads 13-2. to two. Carpenter set and delivers. A curveball had Carlisle guessing way late on the breaking pitch and two away in the bottom of the seventh. That'll bring up Mason Klipfel, the last hope for Hidden Valley in this game. He's 0 for 1, flew out in the third. He walked and committed an error on the base paths, although you won't see it in the scorebook. Really cost Hidden Valley in the fifth inning. Klipfel takes strike one. Carpenter set with the 0-1. Shively sets up on the outside, and Carpenter delivers a curveball lifted into right field. Frank moving over, and he will make the catch to end the ball game. The Henley Hornets come into enemy territory and take a win from the Mustangs, 13-2. We'll be back to recap it for you as we continue your coverage this season of Henley Baseball on 104.3 and 960 Sports and MyBasin.com. Introducing Fifth Bates Marcom Solutions, your trusted partner in marketing and communication. We specialize in crafting compelling campaigns, eye-catching graphics, and impactful branding materials. Smith Bates is like working with dependable friends. They always help us build our professional image. Through the innovative strategies that the team at Smith Bates suggested, we've been able to give the brand at Calor the boost that it desperately needed. Unlock your potential with Smith Bates Marcom Solutions. Unconditional love and immeasurable happiness reside. This is home. Coltwell Banker, where home begins. Threads. There are many threads that run through our region. There are churches and schools and little league teams that bring us together and bind us into communities. There are roads and cars. There are houses and jobs and businesses all woven together to make the fabric of our communities. There are financial threads that are part of that tapestry as well. For over 80 years, it's been our pleasure to be headquartered here, providing financial services to generations of our friends and neighbors. From that first savings account, to retirement planning, and all of the cars and houses and groceries in between, we keep your money local, investing it back into our communities adding more threads to the fabric to make our community stronger. 
Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. Find your path. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 120,000 participants here in Oregon who take part in high school sports or activities. Josh Eldridge back with you from Hidden Valley High School, and this one is over as the Hornets defeated the Mustangs 13-2 this afternoon. 13 runs on eight hits, one error, and eight runners left on for Henley today. Two runs on six hits, three errors for Hidden Valley. They left four runners on base. It was a massive six-run sixth inning that pushed Henley to victory, although they took the lead earlier than that. It was uh, one run in the third, two in the fifth, sixth in the sixth, and four more in the seventh. But really, that sixth run or that six-run sixth inning is what you highlight for Henley, where they scored six runs on only one base hit. It was walks, errors, hit batters that plagued Hidden Valley in this game as they fall to Henley 13-2. to We'll give the winning pitcher today to Bo Pyle. He's 3-0 and on the season now after working six and a third inning. Six hits, two runs, only one of them earned. He walked two and struck out five. Carpenter came in relief. Mark Carpenter pitched two-thirds of an inning. He struck out one. No hits, no runs allowed for him. Losing pitcher today is Ethan Carlisle. Now, Carlisle worked a solid game today. He pitched five and two-thirds innings, gave up six hits. Nine runs came across on his watch, but only four of them earned. He walked three, struck out four. Uh, and, I mean, that was really what plagued Hidden Valley today, those three errors uh, all coming in the sixth and seventh inning. And, again, just uh, a brutal way to lose for Hidden Valley, who's otherwise had a, a very strong game and continues to have a strong season as we'll take an updated look at the Skyline Conference endings. Uh, and it'll be Henley on top as they improve then to 7-0 and in conference play, 15-1 and overall. Hidden Valley dropping to 10-4 and overall, 4-1 and on the season. Then Phoenix, KU, and Mazama round out the Skyline Conference. These two teams have not seen the last of each other, not by a long shot. We'll actually play again on Thursday when Henley travels again to the Evergreen Federal Bank Sports Complex here at Hidden Valley High School. Once again for you, the final score, Henley 13, Hidden Valley 2. My name is Josh Eldridge. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, and I'll see you again on Thursday. But for now, so long from Murphy, Oregon.